Well, after a long wait this year, it is finally my pleasure to present to you our homemade do-it-yourself from scraps you got lying around the shed threshing machine. But that said, it is state-of-the-art. This thing can do the task that it needs to do. I'm going to start by presenting you with the different components of the threshing machine that do their job and how that works. And then we're going to do a live demonstration here, uh, working our way through a bundle of wheat and show you how much wheat we get out of it and how well it sorts the grain from the chaff. So that's what's coming up here. Well, as we get into the parts here, I want to stress that we've basically got the two functions to worry about. First, the threshing machine has to somehow separate the grain from the, the, the heads that are supporting it. That beating action takes place up here. I'll explain that in a second. And then after we've beat the, the grain out of the, the husks, they're still all mixed together and we need to separate them somehow. And that separation process will take place down here. So those are the two major processes that the threshing machine has to accomplish. And the olden day threshing machines did the exact same thing, just on a much larger scale. So come on in here and I'll explain how this really tiny threshing machine accomplishes those same tasks. Things start out in the top here when we just insert our heads of wheat into the top of the drum here. And when those heads enter the drum, they are met with turning beater bars inside there. I think you can see those with the sunlight creeping in. So this drum is spinning around at about eight to 900 RPM, plenty fast enough to beat the heads and knock the kernels out of the heads. So when those kernels and chaff are separated, they fall to the bottom of this mixing drum. They're met with this separation screen, which just makes sure that uh, we don't get a lot of large pieces of straw coming down into the chamber down here below. And that's a quarter inch screen that we use there. Okay. And then the chaff and the grain are both falling down through this separation chamber. This is where some real magic happens. And what makes the separation possible here is a current of air, a strong current of air that starts at that white outlet right there, where we've got some forced air being blown into the left side column. That air cannot escape anywhere down here. So this is actually where the grain will fall. So that air is forced to come up here through this area of turbulence where we've got some triangle blocks there just to force any grain and chaff to fall into the middle of the column and right into the middle of that airstream. The airstream comes up here and then we've got the easiest path for the air to follow at this point is to come over to the right side because we've got a huge gap here. There's a small gap here as well, but the biggest gap is on the right side. So that's where most of the air is going to flow and it'll follow down onto this side. So originally I thought, oh, I'm going to put a, a vent on the back there. You can see the black mesh vent. That's where the air will escape. But in, in the process of using the machine, I realized I learned at least for wheat, it works better if I just remove this second box altogether to allow things to escape a little easier there. So that's the way that it works now for the, for the wheat threshing. So back up to the top here, um, you'll see uh, an angled ramp. This is where the, the grain and the chaff are falling from the screen above. And they're just gently sliding, working their way down to the left side here and through a little gap, like about an inch gap there where they meet that first triangular block and slide off into the air current. So as soon as they get into the air current, we find out which is heavy and which is light. So the kernels are just heavy enough to fall down past this air current, right through it into the box below. And the chaff is light enough, just light enough to float in that air current over the barricade there and into the other side and out into the bottom collection chamber here. So this is a really magical part to watch during the threshing process. Uh, sometimes we get a little clog here. Debris is a bit too big, so we added this little poker stick. Pop, pop, pop. That solves that problem without having to take off the plexiglass. That's basically how it works. Now let's spin this thing around and talk about the, the mechanics that drive the system. At the top, we've got a drum with the beater bars inside, and that's all being driven by an electric motor. So here's the drive system for that. We've just got some pulleys hooked up, and we can change this ratio of pulleys pulley size here to adjust the speed of our drum. So if I want a faster spin on the inside, I could increase this pulley size here and decrease this one, and I get more revolutions on the inside. For now, we've got it set so it's running about eight to 900 RPM. Our blower 
is an, a jacuzzi blower. So I actually bought this years ago to run our greens bubbler. It just blows air. Um, in that case, it blew air underwater and bubbled our greens to mix them really gently, but it also is doubling for our threshing machine now. So it, it provides the forced air down through this white tube that you saw on the other side. And then we control both of these devices with electronics here, just two switches. The first switch is a dimmer switch that turns our fan on. And the dimmer switch is a very important um, component because it allows us to adjust the fan speed. And when we can adjust the fan speed, we can set it to just the right force so that the grain is falling and the chaff is rising at that key point that I showed you on the front side. And that's, that's definitely going to be different for different grains that we run through here. So that's why it has to be adjustable. It's not something we can just set in stone. The motor though, it can just be turned on with the flick of a switch and run at a constant RPM. Um, if we want to change that, we'll, we'll need to change the gears there. And we all plug it into, yeah, both of these are electric driven, obviously. So we'll just plug it in to run it and we can back it with our solar panels. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> no emissions coming from this threshing machine. All right, now it's time to see this thing in action. So let's pull out the grain here. We'll set up a little workstation and let the camera roll so you can see how it works. Okay, we're set up for the demo, I think. We've got one bundle of wheat here that looks about like this, so you can keep that in mind as we make it disappear here and, and thresh it into our little box down below. Um, we've learned that the limiting factor in terms of speed is not how fast the threshing machine can work, but how fast we can get the grain ready to, um, to slide in the top. When we first grab a handful of grain, they're not all at the same level. So we've got some at the top, some down here. And I could shove them all in, and I have, and that ends up breaking off some large stems here in the process. And those stems tend to jam the machine a little bit. So what you're gonna see Rachel doing as I'm putting the wheat in the top here is grabbing handfuls of wheat and aligning the heads a little bit like that so that when I slide them in the top of the threshing machine, they're all gonna get beaten at the same time. So I think without further ado, let's start this up and do a little demo for you here. There's the blower. Set at just the right point where I know it separates the wheat and the chaff. And then we'll turn on the, the beater bars as well. There we go.
to shut down the threshing machine, we just first stop the stop the beater bars first. Keep the fan going because there's usually some chaff that settles out after that. Make sure we get a clean withdrawal here. And there's a look at our our finished product. Not perfect, but I don't know. It's hard for me to imagine making a machine that could get much better than that. So we got a few things to sort out, a few loose pieces to sort out when we're using this stuff. Um, could maybe run it through the the winnowing component here again to clean out those last little bits. Now we can shut off the fan. So some of you are probably wondering, does this work for oats too? We've tried it already, but we've got some fine tuning to do for the oats. So these, here's a bunch of oats. <laughs> They're, the tops are floppier and the thing that makes it more difficult for this threshing machine to work with oats, at least so far, is that their tops, their head and their husks, the, like the oat grain and the husk falls off the plant really easily. So then I find that this whole component is less likely to get thrashed up because it's not getting just knocked from the stalk. The whole husk is falling off with it. So I tend to get a bunch of these coming down into the winnowing component before the, the seeds have actually been knocked from the, the husk. So I'm experimenting with different ways to get it cleaner. Uh, but that's, that's a look at our finished oat product. We still got some some husks in there and those ones have made it through because they still have some oats inside that make them heavy enough to, to fall onto the grain side of the winnower. So, so that's maybe got some fine tuning yet. I'm working on ideas to make that de-hulling process a little bit easier. Even though these are hullless oats, apparently the, the oat still remains in the hull a little bit. So we got that to figure out. And I think we'll leave the demo there and you can ask questions if, if there aren't any already, I'll respond to them and yeah, I'll try to explain things a little better.